My name is Tim Moyer, and I work at the DICE Group, and we use technology to advance the future of healthcare and education at Jefferson. First of all, XR is an umbrella term for AR, VR, and mixed reality, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but it's much faster to say XR and extended reality than to label out all those terms. So the ideas I'm about to share are the meditation of our XR lab team for your consideration. My background is in user experience, and over the last few years, I've come to realize that XR is the next progression of human computer interface, and um, I think it will subtly change many facets of how we work, learn, socialize, and consume. In our quest to introduce and integrate XR into one of the nation's uh, most established academic medical centers, um, oftentimes it can feel like we're on a VR roller coaster. Each week has its ups and downs. But to clarify some of these terms a bit further, augmented reality, or AR, is uh, basically putting virtual content into your environment. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily take into account all the objects and nuances of that environment. So simply trying to overlay virtual content onto your environment, usually using a smartphone or smart glasses. And one popular example of this is uh, the, um, it's a very popular game where you're looking for characters in the real world and you're trying to share them and collect them with friends. Mixed reality takes it a bit further where uh, it kind of takes into account what is in your environment and it tries to integrate or blend virtual content into your environment. And this can get very interesting. Um, one of the popular use cases is picking out furniture and these try before you buy examples. You can place furniture in your living room and uh, depending on the sophistication of the hardware, it can take into account the lighting in the room. You get a pretty good idea of the size and what you're in for before you make that purchase. Another great example is um, a popular mobile app where you can uh, basically hover over a menu in a restaurant. If the menu happens to be in a language that you don't understand, you can select that language, and then in real time, in front of you, it will change the, the words on the menu through your, your smartphone. And it's basically blending virtual content into your environment. While mixed reality blends content into the user's environment, virtual reality places you in a fully virtual environment. And typically this is done with VR headsets. And when I explain this to my four-year-old, I say it's like being inside of a movie and you can interact with the characters and the scene. So why use this technology? Uh, why is this important? Well, we've all been patients in healthcare, and I think we can agree that healthcare is in need of transformation. Every day when I go into work, I think about uh, one of my favorite Aesop's fables, and it deals with emerging technology. So this Aesop fable starts with uh, a group of mice that were gathered, and it was a cold winter, and the mice were very hungry. And they were trying to find a solution for this cat that was terrorizing their way of life. And a very clever mouse stepped forward with a solution. He said, I think we can use this bell, and we can place it on this cat so that we can always hear of his approach, and we can plan our day around him. Well, the mice loved this idea. They all applauded. They thought it was fantastic. Frequently in healthcare, we turn to new technology to usher in this transformation we so badly need. Switching gears a little bit, uh, we typically see a lot of, um, there's, there's a lot of articles or listicles out there that um, basically have headlines similar to this, where, um, and this is a fictitious headline, but it is sort of representational, uh, where, you know, basically they make a lot of claims and often these claims or these reviews are, are not very well backed up with compelling research um, and oftentimes the sources are vague, incomplete, and rarely peer-reviewed. And there's plenty of photos and vision videos out there that captivate the imagination about what this technology can do, particularly in healthcare. Um, but unfortunately, while they captivate the mind, they can also sow seeds of confusion and set unrealistic expectations about where we are today. So uh, in this particular example that I kind of pulled, um, you know, presumably the 
surgeons are using AR glasses and they're looking at uh, the patient's scans, virtual scans, and they're collaborating in real time on a pretty big deal surgery. Now, while people are using AR and exploring it in surgical settings, we are not here yet. And this is what I call the hype. So the story continues. After the solution of belling the cat was introduced, everyone applauded. But then an elder mouse stepped forward and said, well, this is a great solution, but who will bell this cat? And, and exactly how will they do this great task? The mice were silent as his questions rang louder than the bell itself. This fable offers a two-part lesson. First, healthcare is the cat. And in healthcare, we are often very quick to embrace new solutions. And the second part of this lesson is that implementing new solutions is very hard and takes a long time. Our XR lab is belling this cat and diving into the challenges and opportunities this new medium presents. Uh, we do this by collaborating with patients, providers, and medical educators to explore the value of XR technology. And uh, we do this by evaluating and integrating existing solutions and products. Uh, we also look at uh, designing and building prototypes and conducting research. And oftentimes these activities are interrelated. In the past three or four years, there have been many studies that have been published um, that offer great promise and potential for VR to reduce anxiety and sense of pain for patients, and I'm very excited about this. Uh, this recent study that was published um, looked at, uh, well, there was 120 participants and most, almost half of them were split into the control and the other half was split in the uh, experiment group, and you can check out this study yourself. But the authors concluded that VR significantly reduces pain versus the active control condition in hospitalized patients. And VR is most effective for severe pain. This could revolutionize the way that patients experience critical moments in their healthcare journey. In addition to that study mentioned, there's promising research studies and platforms that are emerging all over the place and being very useful in these areas of healthcare. And medical education itself is going through its own transformation. And uh, VR for simulation training is also looking very promising. Often in clinical settings, loved ones can feel trapped and anxious. My dad struggled with leukemia for two and a half years. And oftentimes during his journey, uh, he needed to have a, piece of, a small piece of bone extracted so they could examine and evaluate how much cancer had, was growing. And this was called a bone marrow biopsy. And usually leading up to this uh, procedure, he was extremely anxious. And with what I've learned about the therapeutic benefits of VR, I've wondered if uh, potentially VR could have helped him while he was laying there for 20 minutes or so, staring at a wall, anxiously waiting for the needle to be drawn. And likewise, in infusion centers all over the country, uh, patients typically wait two to four hours for their infusion treatments. We wonder, can VR help patients uh, escape the confines of these clinical spaces? Vestibular rehab therapists work with patients dealing with symptoms of vertigo, balance issues, and dizziness. It took me a while to figure out what is vestibular rehab. Um, they are challenged to come up with therapeutic tasks that work in clinic, but also apply to patients' daily life. Um, a popular example of a task that happens is what's called the disco ball, and it's, it's a little tricky to see, but uh, towards the top there, patients are challenged to focus on a target, and it's a post-it note with a letter B, while these shapes whiz by. And this is meant to approximate uh, what a patient might experience in the wild with uh, cars whizzing by as the, as the person is trying to focus on a crosswalk sign. It's a pretty big deal. You know, it's really important that they are able to acclimate and be challenged with this. Can VR provide an intermediate in-clinic activity to more conveniently place patients in scenarios that resemble these activities of daily living? Can we use this technology to take patients uh, between this, uh, to create a step between this disco ball and actually being there in real life where stakes are high? 
poorly designed and positioned content can result in harm. And oftentimes, with new technology, we want to just jump right in and uh, want to just try it because it looks so cool, it's new. But if we aren't careful, our efforts could backfire. One common concern is cyber sickness. Um, that's something that used to happen a lot, I guess, as people used to throw up in VR. Uh, I haven't witnessed anybody throwing up in VR, thankfully, but it's a concern that's out there. Um, and it can be very tempting to provide a VR headset in a given patient setting and just let patients enjoy it. Just put it there. Hey, why not? So easy. Um, however, wearing a VR headset is not analogous to watching TV, and it's not analogous to being on a tablet, which currently are in hospital rooms today. Our team is acutely aware of the power of XR technology to hijack the senses, uh, or your proprioceptors. Our current reality is that XR may not be for everyone. Now, we are focused on XR for education and patient care, and thus far, we've surfaced a range of challenges and questions that require research and discernment from medical providers and content creators. The challenges that prevent us quickly from moving forward are many. One, one example is it's challenging to enroll patients. Um, a 2017 Cedar sinai Medical Center article noted a 17 to 1 enrollment ratio. And they approached uh, 510 pa uh, inpatients, and only 30 uh, agreed to participate and because they were both eligible or willing to experience this new technology. Now, that was a couple of years ago, and I'm hopeful that you know, these uh, enrollment rates are, might be a little bit favorable today, but the challenge remains the same. And when we look at patient safety and comfort, we have to consider how do we clean devices between patient usage? Are there age limits? And what age limits are appropriate for different types of content? One device manufacturer recommends that uh, people under 13 should probably not be using VR. And yet we see a lot of uh, pediatric research happening with VR, showing some promise there. Our team is also challenged by providing uh, ongoing tech support, troubleshooting things constantly, uh, being deployed or, or trying to set things up for events. We must proceed with caution and diligence and recognize that positioning quality content into acute healthcare contexts is belling the cat. If XR is placing the bell, this is how our team is approaching it. We try to be responsible pioneers and begin with the end in mind. To avoid the hype at the start of each new project, we try to create a project plan and measure effectiveness. To accomplish this, we use a three-phase approach that was influenced uh, by a paper that was published by a consortium of 21 uh, healthcare providers and VR experts uh, across the world, um, and many of whom have been researching for over a decade. In addition to studying available content, our team occasionally produces prototypes. And regarding the vestibular therapy opportunity, what if a therapist could place a patient into an environment that resembles an activity the patient enjoys, such as gardening, and pair this with therapeutic goals, such as range of motion? Well, we're building a prototype that will enable the therapist to co-browse with the patient, communicate with the patient, and uh, basically uh, allow them to adjust the stimuli as the patient is going through this activity. Once the therapist is satisfied with the features of this early prototype, we'll design a research study to enable patients and therapists to experience the content uh, of this prototype and provide feedback. And in this way, they both will be co-authors in this design process, and we'll be able to iterate on it. And regarding situations where patients are feeling trapped for hours or in moments of great anxiety. Well, our team is working with providers in oncology to design studies that leverage available VR content and to help patients escape the confines of these clinical spaces. Imagine instead of staring at that wall, uh, waiting for that needle to be drawn, a patient could begin to interact with uh, elements of nature or be in meditative environments. 
Though this may sound exciting, I make no illusions by just how much patience and persistence is required of our research coordinators, Julia and Victoria, as oftentimes um, oncology research can take four to six months, on average, it seems, we've learned so far, um, for them, these uh, studies to be approved by various boards and committees uh, to ensure patient safety and the integrity of the research. And finally, as my team member Julia says, pioneering is messy. There's great potential for this emerging technology to transform the delivery of healthcare. However, it requires careful consideration and focused dedication from all of us. Whether you're a provider, an educator, or a patient, that's the beauty of science. We each get to participate, and in many ways, we're morally compelled to explore this new technology. Research suggests that XR will serve as a critical healthcare tool of the near future. However, we must continue to engage the challenging questions we see and view them as valuable research opportunities. We are all pioneers at the beginning of this new era. Tomorrow's healthcare experience will be shaped by the caution and passion of today's questions. Thank you for your time.